Hey guys, welcome to another SaaS landing page teardown. Today we have Tetra, which is uh, just a tool where you can create uh, knowledge bases for your team. It works directly within uh, Slack and Microsoft Teams. Um, and essentially what I've done is actually found this interview with Nathan Lacta that goes over a bunch of different numbers, how they get their customers, uh, a few uh, key insights, like they switched to a freemium model, uh, like recently and all these things, which is really useful to kind of highlight some of the opportunities that they have on their website, right? So first of all, obviously, it's it's obvious they can build a knowledge base. One of the things that they probably have is a USB is working directly within Slack and Microsoft Teams. So what I would do is I would add the logos right away so you can see it. But most importantly, I wouldn't recreate uh, the UI of like a standalone UI from Tetra. What I would do is I would show uh, how this works like with uh, a GIF or something of of sending a knowledge base to a team, or maybe it's it's a different, it's a button that you click within Slack where you can access the entire knowledge base or whatever it is, uh, however it, it works. I would show it right away because you're telling me that it works within Slack and Microsoft Teams and then you show me a different interface, right? Because this is something that a lot of teams worry about uh, because um, the bigger the bigger the team and the more the people the poorer people they have in the team the more um, things they need in their knowledge base and the harder it is to teach everyone to use a different tool so using the exact same tool they're already using is just way better right same thing what ha happens here right well why not just show a gif of someone uh, of like the bot replying automatically that this question is already answered and showing if the bot detects some of these questions uh, or if you have to like send the link manually or whatever the how or whatever it works, right? We don't need to go to another page just to figure out how a Slack wiki works, right? It's unnecessary. When it comes to uh, tapping into your experts, uh, I would show how this look like, right? So for example, when someone answers a question, this automatically creates a new page that we, well, that's what it seems like uh, if you really pay attention to what it's saying. But I would, why not just show actually how that works, right? So someone asked a question and then uh, wh while someone replied, it created a new page and now it's a knowledge base that everyone can, can edit or some people can edit if they have their expertise, right? Then uh, how do how do you select, um, for example, this was verified by Andy, for example, how do you select which people in your team have the expertise to edit the documents, right? Uh, or how do you, um, uh, for example, like this is really cool because you can embed uh, Google Docs and, and uh, G uh, GitHub uh, files and all these things. So that's great. But uh, where do those go, right? Can you add everything into uh, one file? Because can this still be embedded within Slack and Microsoft Teams? How does that work exactly, right? So, or how long does it take to migrate from my current knowledge base uh, to uh, Tetra, for example, right? So that would be like really interesting. Uh, and then the other opportunities that they're really losing out on is one, uh, this this is one which can essentially get the more signups, but more importantly, signups from bigger companies, right? Because the more users they have, the more skeptical they are, the more the the more uh, the longer it takes to switch from one tool to another and so on and so forth right and the more they pay you so they're more interested in that right then the other opportunities uh, that i found is the difference between uh, uh, the free and the scaling plan and even even the enterprise could be a bit a little bit clearer right so what i need to focus on is on the upgrade paths rather than the features so you can see that there are a lot of different features here Obviously, that might be a reason why they upgrade, but the main reasons why most people might upgrade is because of the storage limits, uh, is because of the uh, integrations that they that they would like, uh, and also uh, the single side-on, but that's mostly for uh, enterprise, really. Right, so what I would do is even though these have like different categories, which is great, it's, very, like, it's pretty organized, what I, what I would show is uh, I would just figure out what are the, the five features that people uh, would upgrade for and then show those first and then show the, the rest uh, afterwards because it's just easier on a high level to figure out which one uh, I want to go for, right? Um, then the, the biggest opportunity that they're missing out on because when it comes to optimizing for landing pages, you can either uh, try to get more signups or try to get them to pay more. Essentially, what they really need to optimize for, even though they have these uh, guides and everything, which is mostly like a, a blog or an article, is they need to have a bunch of use cases, maybe like weekly webinars with customers or stuff like that, where they show how to build more things or, or, or how to share knowledge within their team, right? How to turn someone in the team into uh, an expert or how to eliminate some of the repeti uh, repetitive questions or tasks or best practices for knowledge bases or even tearing down someone's knowledge base on a webinar for customers so they can see it, how they can do it better, right? Because what happens is uh, they might have people signing up for the um, 
for for a plan that is like less than 10 users in the free plan but they actually have way more people in the team this happens quite a lot where you have uh, an account that actually could have 200 users but only 20 or 30 people are using it right so essentially you can expand the the accounts uh, on e each company because you you haven't maxed out uh, that account yet right so those are a few ways um, to do that, just showing more use cases, those weekly webinars could work well, uh, the emails could work well as well, uh, some guides within the application as well, like lots of different opportunities here, those are like the main three that I would like to share. If you're interested in seeing how this might apply to you, just go to curtest.design slash apply. Essentially what you can do is you can uh, go here and schedule um, a 15 minute inter introduction, 15, 20 minute introduction. We'll figure out, can I help you in the first place? Uh, learn a little bit more about the business, kind of figure out what are some of the opportunities you have. And then in case it sounds like a good fit, it sounds like a, I can help you, which I do have a sweet spot for clients. What we can do is we can book another call to discuss the how, what does the process look like? What are the tweaks that we want to make? So on and so forth, right? So if you're interested in seeing, learning more and just seeing how this might work for you just let's start off with an, uh, an int introduction call super casual and take it from there right so hopefully you enjoy this teardown and uh, talk to you on a call cheers